Okay, I'm Craig Jackson. I'm Blackboard Tech Support at the RCU. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is how to go in and create your own social media, social media network using some free tools. At any point in here, we can slow down, speed up, or move forward as you need to. First of all, how many of you guys have, and ladies, have a Twitter account? No? Uh, I'm going to give that guy a harump over here. Okay, what we're going to talk about primarily is how you can take all of these tools and create a social network, social media network that you can get out to all your kids, parents, administrators, people in the community for free. One tool that I use that's not really in the list is Google Voice. Look whose name is up at the top, Victoria. Google Voice allows you to make phone calls and text messages to anybody in the United States for free. As long as the call needs to be, as many texts as you need, absolutely free. They can call you, they have to pay. The good thing about it is, you see this number right here. When I talked about Victoria texting me at 5.30 in the morning asking a question about something, this is the number that she texts. Not my personal number, not my desk number at work, but this number here. This number can then be forwarded to any phone number I want it to go to. My cell phone, my office phone, or my home phone. They don't know it. They call it, and this rings. If somebody, somebody pick up and call 662-205-6323, uh, please. If you got a cell phone handy. 205-632, yeah, Victoria, I'm surprised you just, boom. 6323. Oh yeah, this is the Blackboard Tech hotline. You don't have to go through the front desk. You call that, it rings directly to me. I'm on the road, but since, as you can see, right here, it's ringing. It says RCU Tech Support is ringing me, so I sit there and answer the phone, and I can now start talking, and I got feedback, because we're both on speakerphone. As far as she knows, she's talking to somebody in the office in Starkville. She can't, she can call back anytime she wants, thank you for that. She can call back anytime she wants, but she's not calling me, she's calling this number right here. People also can leave voice messages throughout here. If they want to, they can leave a text message. Where's my X? There it is. Right here, these are text messages that come in. This is one from Victoria. How do you open an archive in Blackboard? So she's, she is sending this in, texting it into this phone number. If I want to, I simply go, And I send that, and it's a whole lot easier than doing this. This is a great way that you can keep up with your students, your parents, the administrator, but they don't have your personal number. And the thing is, if Victoria starts bothering me, <laughs> I go right over here and I say, block caller, hasta la vista, baby, and it's over, okay? <laughs> So that's the great thing about this tool. You can also go in and generate different voice messages, voice greetings. So as you start getting parents that call up, if a parent calls up, you can say, greetings so and so, I'm, I'm always looking forward to hearing from the parents of my children. You know, if you have a message, please leave it for me. If an administrator calls up, you know, thanks for calling, I'm in the middle of teaching a class right now. So you can have a different greeting for your different groups. So that's pretty cool. It gives them a feeling of being personalized when actually you're being just shuttled out to different numbers. Okay? 
That's the first thing. That's not in here. But Google Voice is, is very simple to put together. Like I said, I've, I've made, I can go right here to the inbox and let's see, where is it? History. Come on, there it is. 1,053 phone calls that I have made on this in the past year and a half. You know how much my phone bill was? Zero. You can use it with your cell phone. You can actually, if you just plug a headphone in here into your, into your computer, you can make phone calls from your computer. Absolutely free. And as you can see, it does keep a record of what goes on. And what I can also do, like on Victoria's right here, I can go in here and add a note and put comments. She had problems with this, she needed this, we got her this. So I can go back in at any point in time and look at this and give that information back if they have a question about it. So that's the first thing, that's, that's kind of off the page, but Google Voice is, a, is really an outstanding pro, and it's absolutely free. And like I said, I've got it for my personal phone, I've got it for my office phone, and I don't pay anything. When somebody calls me, I can pick it up here, I can text back to them, and it looks like it's coming from right here. So that's a good number to call. The next thing I want to share is the WordPress blog site. How many of you blog? Okay. Blogging is a way to get information out to your students or anybody that you want to. Um, Blackboard has a blogging feature in it, but it is contained within Blackboard. And it is not necessarily a blog as much as it is just a daily journal that you can write something into and tell them to remember to do this, remember to do that. This blog site is craigstechblog.wordpress.com. Now this lady, what's your name? Alicia. Alicia's looking at me like, why do you want me to write this stuff down? It's 3.30 in the afternoon, I've written all day. Next thing I want to write is my name on the check from dinner. What I do here is I have links to the different presentations. I have different presentations I have done on software that you can get, Web 2.0 tools that you can use, different things like that. Also have Blackboard tips as they come up and we try to get them out and links to our screencast from there. So this is a, a very helpful blog. I also talked to a couple of guys today who were talking about actually participating as well and putting some more tech support type blogs up here. So all you've got to do is go in here today and see what we're doing. Go to My Presentations and 2013 Mecca and the session two site what you're going to do is you're going to see the handouts that will be there on how to create a twitter account and since we've got only one person in here right one person that doesn't have a twitter account two people through how many how many do have a twitter account okay so we're about half and half so i guess we need to you have to have a password Okay, so we'll go over how to do a Twitter site. We'll talk just briefly about our text messaging system we went over this morning. The main thing we really want to talk about this afternoon is creating an online newspaper. An all, it's, it's no more a newsletter that is self-aggregated based on feeds that you tell it to watch. Twitter feeds, Facebook pages, YouTube videos, whatever. And then it generates a paper once a week once a day or twice a day that your students or your other faculty members or your parents can go in and look at and see what's going on. What's been the big push around this session so far today? Common Core. Common Core. I've actually got a paper, Common Core in Technology Education. It goes through and it finds anything in Twitter and some other RSS feeds that has Common Core in it. So you don't have to go out and look for it anymore. It comes to you, okay? So let's go ahead and start, first of all, with Twitter. I'm gonna let Alicia take you through the steps on how to create a Twitter account, okay? Don't be scared, it doesn't bite. 
What you're going to do is you're going to go to Twitter.com. If you want to go ahead on the computers and go to Twitter.com, this is a very short, short procedure. So I won't hang you up. Once you get to Twitter.com, you want to come to this section that says New to Twitter. You're going to put your name. You're going to put your email account. And then you are going to create a password to get into Twitter. Okay, is everybody with that so far? Okay. Now if we get too, too far ahead, just throw something at us and I'll duck and Alicia get mad at us. Go ahead and hit sign up with Twitter. Once you do that, it's going to come up and show you that your full name is not in use. That looks good. Your email is not in use. That looks good. Your password is strong enough. And this username is available. Now when you are choosing a username in Twitter, you want to keep two things in mind. You want it to be descriptive, to say who you are or what you are. If you're you know, a STEM teacher, if you are a doctor, you know, if you're an Indian chief, whatever. Now, you are limited to, I believe it is 15 characters, 15 or 16, I, keep, I get them confused. But Twitter itself is limited to 140 characters. So if you've got a 15 character username, if somebody goes to retweet your message, now they've lost 18, 18 characters. So they can't necessarily do a whole lot of commenting on it. So you want to keep something relatively short, but descriptive. Okay, Mrs. ERJW. And this username is available. Has everybody gotten this far? Okay, you got yours. Rick, did you remember your password? Okay. So that's why I use the same one over and over again. If I get hacked, hey, it just makes it easier for them too. Okay, are we good to go? What we're going to do is right here where it says, keep me signed on this computer, never check that. Where it says, tailor my Twitter based on my recent website visits, uncheck that. Because if you've been going out looking at clown sites like they had the clowns downstairs, or if you've been looking at cartoons, or if you've been looking at football, or if you were looking at ballerina stuff for your daughters, that's the kind of Twitter accounts it's going to find for you to follow. We don't want to do that. Now we're going to click on create my account. Okay? It's going to ask you to prove that you're human. That looks like N-T-H capital T-R-A-D. You're better than I am. And once you do that, go ahead and create the account. Folks, that's how hard it is to create a Twitter account. For those of you who have not done it before, all that anxiety over nothing. Now, did you hit create? Yeah. Okay, Apparently the capture wasn't right. Four, four one seven four. That's going to be, I've got a personal account. Let me, just, let me just add this right here. And this is strictly Craig Jackson. This is not Holy Writ from MDE or anything like that. I recommend you having a personal Twitter account and a professional Twitter account. My personal Twitter account is Left Field Lounge. That's baseball at Mississippi State. My professional Twitter account is Craig Jackson. Also, I've got one for Blackboard Tech Support that is RCUBB Tech. 
So what, what do you teach? Well, I have a Twitter account through West South. I teach graduate school for West South Okay. I have one for that, but I'm going to set me up one for my personal. Okay. I do it for my class. I just have my classes. That right. Well, that, and that's a good point. What's your name? Lisa McNeil. Lisa, it, it's, it's important to remember people follow your personal account because they're your buddy. I follow your, your professional account because I want to learn from you. I want to find out about online learning. I don't, I don't want to be your friend, I want to be your colleague. So put that as a professional one. And if you, you know, the personal one, if you want to, you know, have, you know, some name that your friends call you, you know, your close friends may have a nickname for you, you can do that. But again, for professional purposes, you know, you may want to put, um, Craig STEM teacher or something like that but that's a very good question once you have once you have gone ahead and completed that you will see now that you are in Twitter and you are ready to go you'll hit next and we're, we're going to skip all of this right here because we're not going to search for followers right now so go back up to the top yeah, this is the problem because we haven't go back up to your once you once you've gotten this far you want to go in to your address bar and put twitter.com because we're not going to go through right now the process of following people and doing that kind of stuff that's that's just their way of getting you into these things getting hooked into it now you'll notice at the very top it's going to say confirm your address to access all the features. We're gonna skip that for right now because you probably don't have access to your email here, but all you have to do is go click on it and it will bring you back here. Now, the main thing you wanna do with Twitter is tweet. We have two ways to do this. You can click in this box that says compose a new tweet, or you can use my favorite. You go up to the blue box up at the top right hand corner and compose a new tweet there and it brings it right out in front of everything. If you want to add a picture that's on your computer, you would click there, find the picture, and it would upload. To send your first tweet, you got 140 characters. What do you want to say? Thank you, Jesus works for me. Now, as she starts typing, you'll notice that her character numbers start decreasing over here. Now, she's typed this out. I want everybody at Mecca to see this message. They're not following you right now. How are we going to let them see this message? Nope, 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 nope. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. Now, to make sure everybody sees that, we're going to use a hashtag. You might have seen on the boards down there, hashtag MSMecca13. Yeah. So we're going to go in. The hashtag says search for MSMecca13. Now, when she tweets this out, voila, everybody that's following, that has a Twitter account, if they put in MS Mecca 13, even though they're not following her, they're going to see that. Let me pull up a Twitter. So we put MS Mecca 13 in there? MS Mecca 13 is the hashtag. If somebody goes and searches for that, it will show up. Do I? You weren't? You don't, I was typing okay, in. Okay, you just type that in. It's the hashtag. It's the pound sign. So at the, yes, ma'am. You know, we had the two word things. What if you don't recognize what something is? Okay, there's a little circular arrow. If you click that, it will give you another one. And it will give you some until you can finally see what you're doing. Is it 2013 or just 13? Just 13. Now, if I want to go in now and look for hashtag MS 
Mecca 13. Now what's going to happen is it's going to bring up, ho, oh, look at that, enjoying Mecca Conference, MS Mecca 13. I'm not even following her. I don't even know her name, but I see that she's posted something. I can see the hover cam has talked about teachers and tools booth, raffle at four o'clock. I don't know them, but they've got that hashtag MS Mecca 13. And because of that, you're able to go back and search everybody that's doing that. Okay? That's a good thing about Twitter that we're I'm using a product called TweetDeck. Okay, so not just but what you can do, thank you very mm -hmm. much for You're helping. Welcome. Big hand for the lady now. Very nice for her to help us. <laughs> We're going to get somebody else here in a minute. It might be one of our candidates. What you can do is in Twitter, right here in the search, I can do MS Mecca 13. And when I do that, it's going to bring up the same thing. My favorite ed tech resources. Here's Alicia, the Hovercam, Eva. All these people are using that hashtag. So when you are tweeting out information to colleagues, whether it's about Common Core or whether it's about Blackboard or whatever, if you establish a common hashtag, it's going to show up there and they'll be able to search for it and find it. Okay, that's the great thing about Twitter that people don't really think about. They go and search Google for information on something. Google wants you to pay to be at the top. And then they've got their own little algorithms on how to go in and search for certain keywords. So somebody's doing something important, maybe way down the list because they don't have the proper keywords that Google was looking for. Or the stuff at the top may be outdated, but just because it had the right words, it's up at the top. With TweetDeck, if you go in, I mean with Twitter, if I go in and do, let's see, Alabama hostage. What I can do here, it's going to bring up anything about Alabama hostage, hostage five-year-old hostage it's going to do that if you've got an emergency situation last summer at Auburn Alabama they had that shooting at the party with the football players that got shot and killed and the fugitive I went into Twitter and did that hashtag search for Auburn shooting and this thing was just spinning like an odometer going backwards because all these people were putting up fresh information as you can see here there's their hashtag, CNN. Here's a website. Now you can go and find a website maybe to local news or to something that you haven't found doing a Google search. So Twitter is a really great search engine for you to use to find information and to share with your kids. If you wanted to share this right here, you could simply go and do retweet and what it's going to do, and this would be coming from Alicia, it's going to retweet this message to all your followers. So if you find something that's interesting, it goes out. Yes, ma'am. Let me ask this. So if I think I posted something and it didn't come up on the Mecca, what are the possibilities that I did? Well, that's what I was going to check the MS, the hashtag. And the hashtag was MS Mecca 13? All one word? Okay, you've got one that says MS Mecca 13. Uh, I have Radio Victoria where hers is Alicia Jones. See, I don't have hers online. It's possible it just has not shown up yet. Uh, I can go over here to my tweet deck. And the good thing I like about tweet deck is that, oh, I didn't, okay, there's Mississippi Mecca, there's Victoria. Mm -hmm. See, it updates it more often than Twitter does. But I don't see, Sunshine, I don't see yours. Okay, now I did too. I saw that. 
But that's, that's, that's what Twitter can be used for. You can also go in and create an additional column. And this is TweetDeck. TweetDeck is, a, is an application I can talk to you about later on if we need to. You can download this onto your machine. You set up a free account. And when you use TweetDeck, you can have the same interface online that you do on your desktop. So if you're sitting here and you've got certain columns set up like I've got set up right here for baseball notes and so forth, I can just go here and look at it as easily as I can having my own computer with me. Okay, Rick, you had a... I just keep getting, you can't do this right now, so... Here, have a squished up Pop-Tart. It's, it's brown sugar cinnamon, but it's okay. But that's what, now, now why do we want to have Twitter? Twitter is really the core of the social media blitz that we're going to do because you're reaching people that follow Twitter right now. The good thing about Twitter is everybody uses it right now. 750,000 tweets per second. Okay? That's a lot of tweets. I can't even count past two. So you're going to have you're going to have Twitter right there. It's rolling, rolling, rolling. During the day, you're sending out messages. And unless you're sitting here looking at your Twitter account, you miss it. But we have a way where we can use a product called Selly to create a text messaging system. Come on, Debbie, don't give up on me yet. Don't give up on me yet. I've got you here. I'm going to get you. This is easy. Selly is easy. What you do with Selly is you tie it into your Twitter account. Okay? Now, I'm not going to take the time to go through this one all the way. I did it this morning. And the video and the contents will be up online that you can go back and look at. But what you do with this is you create a free text messaging network. To create a cell, you simply go in, start a cell. The name of this cell is going to be CJ's Social Stuff. And again, you see we're limited to 6 to 20 characters. So I'm going to go in and create that cell. Now, as educators, our biggest concern is transparency. You want everybody to see what you're sending to everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to say anybody can join my group. Okay? Once you've done that, this is the really, really heart of the program. There's three things that you can do with Selly. You can do a curated chat. I don't recommend doing a curated chat or a chat at all. I recommend leaving that on Twitter or a discussion forum. Why? Have you ever sat by somebody who got text message after text message after text message? You get into the discussion, your phone's going to be buzzing all the time. You don't want it. You want this to be an alert system when there's bad weather, when you've got a test coming up to remind kids, nine weeks test start Monday, to remind parents, get the kids up in the morning, give them breakfast, you know, get a good night's sleep tonight. That's the kind of alert you want to use this for. So we're going to say alert only. You can send a message. They can't. If they try to reply to you, it just says, sorry, no comprende. So we say alert only. Once we do that, we get to the last step. We put a welcome message. We say, welcome to Debbie's alert system. For more information, go to my blog site or something like that, where they can go and get the information. You want to put your cell location. Lamar County Schools, possibly. Put the Lamar County Schools logo right there. Okay, real simple to do. 
You can put your website. And again, you are not hiding who you are. You are not hiding behind some logo or some fictitious made up name. Then the coup de grace, we want to make this public to the world. And as you can see, highlighted in red, anyone in the world can see the cell messages. That's about as transparent as it gets. Okay? If I was that transparent, I could stand right here and Alicia could see through me. But she can't. Membership conversations are control. Search engines will index your messages. So if you're putting out information, that might also get caught up in Google and things. You can do hashtags, do your cells. Mission for the public cell. And then we hit finish. Now, how do your students, parents, community people sign up for this? Well, it is, they have to opt into it. You, you, you should not go in and enter them in yourself. They simply bring out their cell phone, they go to their texting application, and the number they dial is 23559. And then once they do that, in the body of the message, they put the name of their cell. In this case, it's CJ's social stuff. So if anybody wants to, grab your cell phone now. I know you're not supposed to use cell phones in class. Well, this isn't really class. So just go ahead and grab it. Pull up your text messaging and do 23559 is the number. And then CJ's social stuff. Now, as you can see, right now it tells me Craig Jackson is the administrator. I've only got one user in here. As soon as you guys start registering and, and opting into this, I will send a message. But you will see that what comes up in this, no you do not. You can just put CJ's social stuff and it does not have to be case sensitive. Pardon me? In the text message. You can't do it? I won't let you? Um, it's a sprint doesn't allow short codes. Uh, I'll have to talk to them about that. Okay. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I've heard these fingers going beep, 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 beep. And now, if we walk over here and scroll down again, you can now see I've got two new users and I've got one person that put Gopher Tech. They didn't have to put that in there and I would prefer that they didn't, but that's, as teachers, as educators, you're gonna have to go by what your district's policies are. Now, You'll notice I'm typing this in right here myself. I can actually use what they call receptors and it will search the web for any specific Twitter account and any specific hashtag like National Weather Service and the county that you live in. And if there's a tornado warning or something, it will, you should have gotten a, a message out now. Anybody get messages? Two three five five nine is the number. So I put that before the words. Jill. You put that in the in the number on your on your cell phone, on the text message application. Uh -huh. It asks for a name or number. You put two three five five nine on that, and then the message is CJ's social stuff. Okay. CJ's social stuff. It does not have to be case sensitive. Okay? Now, while we're doing this, you might see up here, there's a couple of other options. Send, poll, schedule, message. Your educators, you have about as much time as a bulldog has a tail. 
okay? You got a little window of opportunity Sunday afternoon after lunch, before the nap, to schedule anything that you want to post out. What I can do is I can schedule a message to go out today at 4.10, okay? I send it, and what it's going to say is, this was scheduled earlier. So at 4.10, when we're talking about something else, you're going to get a message come across. What I can also do is I can go back and send a poll. If I want to ask you, what is the best time for our nine weeks test? Monday, Tuesday, yesterday. Okay, the poll closes in 30 minutes, or when all the members vote. And what happens is, when everybody votes, it sends you the results. Now, I won't know who is voting how, but as you start getting the messages, we've got a bunch of folks here. Okay, Jeff, funny. Jeff Ellis, ladies and gentlemen, the Rocket MSU. So if you ever see that somewhere, run and hide. Jeff's one of our MECA board members as well. He's the IT guy. He's the one responsible for keeping the, the wireless up right now. So, but what we're going to do, as people start sending in messages and, and responding to this, as people start responding to this and saying yes or no, and I know you can't because it won't take Sprint, I'm going to work on that. I'm a, I know the co-founder. I've talked to the, one of the guys that founded the company. We talk about once, once every two or three weeks. And he said, if we ever need something, talk to them. They really want to work with education. They want to do whatever it takes. Now, look, somebody said today or Tuesday. Somebody said yesterday. I don't know who said that. It's completely anonymous. And that's the great thing. You want it to be anonymous because you want it to be fair. You don't want retrib you know, fear of retribution for answering one way or another. Could we reply to this message? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Did you reply to it? Yeah. Oh, you must have been the one that said yesterday. So we've got six people. Four said yesterday. One said Tuesday and one said Monday. Okay? And there is no way to do this. I can close it and send the results. If I want to close it and send the results, five. Okay. The Rock has voted. But now I'm going to close the poll. Nobody else can vote. It's kind of like Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Final answer, you know, or whatever that was. Million dollar, be a millionaire. Now you're going to get a text message saying, here are the results of that poll. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? So you're giving the test yesterday? Well, apparently I did and you missed it. Sorry. No makeups. Thanks for playing. See, see Jeff at the door for your parting prize. So that's another thing. And here's the, now here's the cool thing. What I can do, um, Victoria has, let me see if I can get back to this now. Victoria, let me get your Twitter account, please. V price, okay. What you can do with, with Twitter, we talked about weather, weather emergencies or something that, you know, uh, it could be a threat against the school or the weather is, you know, getting out early. You want to tie it to a Twitter account so people who are following on Twitter can get the information. If I do Victoria's account here, do hashtag MS Mecca. 13. Now, Victoria, please send a message out. And at the end of the message, put the hashtag MSMECCA13. She does not have access 
to my Sally account. But because I am following her, because I've said, you know, she's, she's our superintendent, she's our principal, or whatnot. I put her as an authorized individual, and as long as it comes from her Twitter account with MS Mecca 13, it's going to show up here. And you see right here, it showed up. Now, sir, what's your name in the corner over here? Keith. Keith? You've got your Twitter account, right? Do the same thing. I'm having fun learning about social stuff and put the MS Mecca 13 on there. I don't have Keith down as an acceptable person. He is not down in my receptors. Whatever he puts out goes out on Twitter, but it's not going to go out on the text messaging. Okay, and you added uh, the people that you want to add, you're adding them Receptors, yes. You go in here. Um, I'll show you my weather. This is for Starkville area weather. When we had the storms come through last week, I wanted to go ahead and put this out because again, middle of the night, you're not watching Twitter. You don't have a TV on. And the sirens may or may not go off. But God knows if your cell phone burps, you're gonna wake up. So what we do here is I go down to my receptors. As you can see, I've got from WCBI, any weather alert they've got that has Octibaha County in it, it's gonna send out a message. As you can see, the last message went out on the 30th at 4.30 in the morning. That was last Tuesday or Wednesday when the storms came through. I wasn't awake, but this came up. This one was actually from the, from the National Weather Service's RSS feed. It wasn't from Channel 4. So you can set it up to follow whoever you want and send out your messages. When Hurricane Isaac came through, Twitter was just all over the place. You don't want, and you can't watch Twitter the whole time. And you don't want your phone buzzing the whole time. So what I did was I put receptors to follow the governor's office, Mississippi Emergency Management, and National Weather Service Jackson if they had the hashtag Isaac included. You can't have one without the other. See, yours didn't show up up here, but yours did show up on Twitter. But since you're not an authorized person, so as an, as an educator, you could have the receptor for your account and a specific hashtag that turns it on. If your superintendent or the school district had an official Twitter account, you could put that and tell them this is the hashtag so then they could send stuff out to your students as well. Okay? You can kick people out if you need to simply by going here and since Jeff has got the wrong one, since Jeff is gone, he's going to wonder why his phone's ringing in just a minute. So that's my great sense of humor. Um, at the rock, I click on this and I kick the rock. He's out of here. It says, do you want to kick him out? You betcha. He's gone. Now, that's just because I was doing to show you how you kick people out. It's anonymous. You don't know who you're kicking out. I could go right here, and let's see. Well, Linda kind of gave herself away there with the Linda McMillan, so I can't kick her out. But these four people right here, I can kick one of you out. But I don't know who I'm going to kick out. Pick a number between one and four. Three? I got a three over here. So I'm going to take the third person and I'm going to kick this person out. In just a minute, somebody's going to say, hey, that was my number. Waiting to see who it is. Wasn't Jeff, because his was, his was the rock. Uh-oh. Sunshine looking like it's her. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It was Rick. Rick got booted. Now, Rick can't come back in 
without an invitation from me. Now you're not going to have to do that because it's going to be anonymous. You're not going to know who, you, who these kids are, who the users are. But you do have that option if you need to. Okay? Yes, ma'am. CJ's social stuff. No, all all one word. CJ's social stuff. CJS, right here. CJS, S O C I L. It, you don't have. It's not case sensitive. It's not case sensitive. Yes, sir. Yes. If, if, you can't, if you can't, if the tweet button is not active, they may not allow you to retweet something or you may have to be accepted as a follower before you can tweet to them. Also, the good thing about Twitter, how many of you have Facebook? Okay. You know what I really hate about Facebook? You can, you can find me and you can send me a private message without my permission. And I just don't really like that. With Twitter, to send me a private message that only I can see, I have to be following you. So if Linda wants to send me a message, say, hey, you're too loud, shut up. The only way she can do it, because I'm not following her, is to put it out on the main timeline. That's as much for your safety as for anybody else's because you don't want those private messages coming in or if somebody hacked your account and sent something from you to somebody else. That's why I really don't like Facebook. But that's, that's basically Sally right there. And again, we started back with Twitter. You remember, with Twitter, you're sending it out to the whole world, anybody that follows Twitter, but they've got to find it in the timeline. At the same time, if you send it out on your Sally account, based on a specific hashtag, now that person gets one specific tweet at a specific time instead of going over and over and over. Okay? We've got about half an hour left. Are there any questions on Selly or Twitter at this point? Okay, let's see what we got here. Sunshine! What were you doing wrong, Sunshine? And you know what? Thank you. If you are going to have a professional Twitter account, you don't want to say you can play and you can play and you can't play and you can't play, but you can. You want to be public to the whole world. If you have it on private, only the people that you accept as your followers can see it. And if you tweet it out or, re or somebody tries to retweet it, You've got, if, if they say it's private, you can't retweet it without their permission, but I got a way around that too. How do I know whether it's private or not? In Twitter, how do you know it's private or not? In Twitter, under the settings, uh, Okay, you click right up here on the gear, okay. and you go to settings. Okay. And let's see, account, where is it? Protect my tweets. You scroll down underneath the time zone and the tweet locator. Okay, you see where my mouse is? Protect my tweets. Yeah, protect my tweets. Right here, tweet privacy. You don't want that checked. If that is checked, only the people that you have approved can see your tweets. And you don't want to do that. You want them to be able to see anything and everything. On your professional side. On your personal side, that's different. And remember, you do want email. You want to have a professional email account. You want to have a personal email account. And you want to have a third one for conferences. So that when you come down here and you see these vendors, what's your email address? I, I won't bother you. I just want to you know, keep up with you. And all of a sudden they start spamming you. Well, it's real simple to know which account it's coming from 
and cut that person out versus giving them all a, a personal number or a professional number. Same thing with Twitter, you need to have a personal one and a professional one so you can separate the two U's. This is Craig now, this is not written in stone, this is what Craig thinks. How do you follow Mecca? If you are in Twitter, what is the MS Mecca? Okay, there is your results for MS Mecca. And if you want to follow them, where is it? Uh, right now. You click on the profile summary, and you click on follow. Now I'm going to follow them for Alicia. She's going to say, why are you following people in my account? Okay. If you go up to the gear, you come, um, settings, and you want to come over to account, and your protect my tweets is right here. Do you see it? Have you got, have you got him, are you helping him with that sunshine? Thank you very much. Is that for women? No, wait a minute. I'm talking about social media. I'm not talking about people's real names. <laughs> Is Victoria your real name? Yeah. Ah, see, I know this. I know this. Okay, any questions about Twitter or Selly at this point? Right. Like they're trying to just learn as much as they can about technology. Okay. Okay, when that next class comes in, do I need to start it up or is it, do you think it's fine? I've been using just the same Twitter account for this class over and over again. Is it, am I making a mistake in the Is it mainly professional tweets that you put out there? It's just professional. Then you don't need to you don't need to recreate. I've got, I've got one, like I said, Left Field Lounge, which is my baseball Twitter account. I tweet out scores, rain delays, things like that. Did you get in finally? See, I knew that Pop-Tart would come in handy. It's better than a lifesaver, okay? But Left Field Lounge is my baseball site. I just think, well, Okay, here's Left Field Lounge. As you can see, this is all about baseball. Tennis ball, Jeff Brantley, eating center of a cheese pizza. That's weird, but then again, I know the guy. I've got my interactions. These are people who are following me and interacting with me. But then here's my Craig Jackson account. And I've got Pete Cashmore. Here's e-learning software, Scoop It, Blackboard Mobile. My Blackboard RCUBB Tech, I'm going to go clear it out, but it has stuff from Blackboard primarily. That's the three, the one on Blackboard Tech, back, uh, RCUBB Tech support. They don't want to know, and when it gets up and running, when people really start following it, that's going to be used for Blackboard is down. Blackboard has had a catastrophic failure. Blackboard will start enrollment on this date. That's all it's going to be, nothing more. My Craig Jackson one will be about, will be like yours, Linda, just all the stuff for your class. Okay? It's a good question, though. And I'll be glad to, to share TweetDeck with you uh, when we get done here, if, you, if you'd like. Any other questions on that? They're all good questions. Thank you for, for asking them. The last thing I'm going to share with you I, I, Linda, I think this is going to be what you like. I really do. There's a website called paper.li. Is this on your links too? This is on my links too. Okay. Paper.li. It shows I've got a handout how to publish it. And you can go look at it now, but I'm going to be revising these after the session to include your questions and comments and different things. 
Selly is the website for text messaging, and then paper.li. How many of you are teachers? <laughs> not, not, not administrators, but teachers. Okay. How many of you are administrators? Okay, you three are just looking at me like, I'm ready to go. Network, what you, admin. network admin. Part tech? And you are? Okay. This is perfect for all y'all. With Paper LI, it takes Twitter accounts that you are following. If it has a link in it to an article, to a video, or to pictures, and at a set interval that you choose, it generates an online newspaper that your students can go in and look at. This is one that's what's new in technology daily. I've got to come out twice a day, eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the evening. Why? When you first come to work, when you're drinking your coffee, checking your email, you can see if there's anything you want to catch up that came out overnight. It's like that Java bug that they had a, about a month ago. A lot of people had no clue about it. And then of course when you get home, because you're not able to go through the timeline the whole time. As you can see, here's create a social media policy for your nonprofit organization. Who owns my online altered or edited picture or image? Now, if I want to go look at that, you'll notice Here's the article. This is the Twitter account. This is the Twitter user that shared that link with it. So if I want to go look at that, I can simply go right here and it pops it up in a new window. Okay? So I can read that. It's just like the USA Today or the Clarion Ledger or the Starkville Daily News. Okay, maybe not like the Starkville Daily News, but it's in there. I can then go back, if I want to follow, make use of, I can bring them up and I can favorite it or I can retweet it or I can go right here and follow them. Okay? All from this online newspaper that generates itself. And the way it generates, you said you search for a specific item. You see, that's why she's a teacher, because she asked these questions. No, no, no. I like that. Look, I'm not normal, I'll tell you that. I, I, I don't mind embarrassing myself or anybody else along with me. You see, here's a blog post that I put in because I am following that link. Anytime I posted a, a web link, it's gonna put it in. It'll also put in, if there are any videos, well, apparently there's no videos or pictures in here today. If I wanna go back and look at something who had a birthday in October? Anybody here have a birthday in October? What's your, what, what date? October 13th. I'm gonna to go to the archives and I'm gonna see on October the 13th, which was a Saturday, what was in my paper on that particular day. Okay, how to test Windows 8 on a tablet. How do I block internet access here? How to change and customize Windows 7. So anything that was tweeted out that day that had links or videos, it's there. Not necessarily. You've got to know. You've got to know just about what date it was. Now, if you go to Twitter, you can go in and search for that. But this is not going to have a search engine because it's just going and pulling what had a link in it. And again, there's no pictures here, but I can also click on topics or, okay, in technology, there are the topics that were in this paper today. Cool links, PDF compressor, is it possible to do this, how to tweak that? Okay, all sorts of stuff. Absolutely free in a newspaper format. So you don't have to go searching through Twitter to find this. Linda, when you're getting your students to go out and find these resources, I tell you what, let's do. I tell you what, let's do. Come here, Linda, please. Me? If you're Linda. I'm Lisa. 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 Well, I, I said Lisa. I said Lisa. It's just somewhere in between here, the wind blew it. Okay. Lisa is going to show y'all 
how to create a newspaper. What you're going to do is you're going to go up to where it says sign up, log in. You're going to choose Twitter because you've got a Twitter account. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to go up to the top where it's got uh, Miss ERJ, sign out, click the down arrow and sign out. Okay, now put your username and password here, please. She's fixing to create her own paper. Now, if you guys, go ahead, go ahead. You're signing in with your Twitter account, yes. Your V Price and whatever your password was. I thought we did our whole email. Or no, no. Okay. This is just your Twitter account. sign in okay try it again please and if not we'll just put it on my account and then we'll I don't want to hang y'all up paper.li from you just go to a browser okay. and put paper yep, dot, okay in the upper right hand corner over here sign up or log in you're going to click on that and it's going to, there you go. Okay, did you get in? It asked me whether to remember the password. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's just do this. That's okay. Well, I, 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 I thought I put in L McMillan at UW. I just did it. But what is your Twitter account name? That's what it's asking for, not your. We'll just go ahead and sign in under my account. Okay. It's not a problem. I can look on my Twitter phone. Name? Yes, your Twitter account, V Price. Now, once we've got this in, what we want to do, you can go ahead and close that, please, is you want to go up to where it says create a paper. Okay? Now, y'all hold on because this gets really rough and bumpy here. You put in the name of the paper that you want it to be. Linda, what do you teach? Lisa, Linda, I don't know, whoever you are, what do you teach? <laughs> uh well, uh, which place? <laughs> I teach, uh, com we teach computer concepts, or we teach, um, I teach technology and education. Okay, well we can go back in and change the name of the paper. So, you say you want to call it um, Computer Concepts Today. Okay. Or Today's Computer, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to call it. Okay, you generate your name of your paper. Okay. You don't have to put the subtitle and description you, and you can change all this, but if you want to come up right now, let's start it as a daily paper. Okay, now hit next. Now, this is where you pick the content. You've got 25 sources that you can put in here. If you want to go do search for anything and put computer concepts. and hit enter. Now what's going to happen, here's computer concepts is synonymous with words, trust, and quality. So if you want to add that as a source to pull tweets from, you simply click on the plus sign and it will go over here into the window. Here's computer concepts again, computer bug. Go ahead and add that one. Here is computer science, one fact per day from computer science. Add that. That one right there. Okay. okay. And if you scroll down, there's others that you can find as well. National Science Foundation. Um, okay. Now, scroll back up. And let's go to YouTube. And here's computer concepts, comp concepts. So just put, add, just add the plug. Oh. Uh, I know. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, back, back, back. Let's see, where are you? I, I guess. He's not going to want me to. There it is. It just, it opened up in a new window. That's okay. 
What you want to do is you want to hit the plus sign uh -huh. to add that. So I go ahead and add that, please. But that's okay. I like to see somebody excited about something. Okay, now let's just say that's what you want to go with for right now. You're going to left click where it says done. Okay, at this point, it is creating your newspaper. With the exception of that little hiccup where we went to YouTube and got all discombobulated. This is going through right now, looking at the past 24 hours of the four Twitter accounts and YouTube, and it's looking for pictures or links. And here we go. This is the paper that you just created. Virtual blood flow, science radio, opinions, findings, conclusions, avoiding a cartog cartography catastrophe. Say that real quick. Say it again, say it again, fast, 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 fast. As you can see, it also has your Twitter feed over here. So if you scroll up a little bit. These are the tweets that you're putting out, okay? So they're able to keep up with what you're tweeting out. Okay, what I just did right there. Yes. Did I just tweeted that? Uh, that what, what you did a long time ago? That was, uh, this says seven hours ago, but this was... This was just recently. Well, no, actually it was because I haven't tweeted anything out recently. But now I've got this. Now, if I want to go in and modify my search, we're going to go up to the, scroll up, and you see where it says scroll up? You see where it's got the gear icons up here? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Click on that. The down arrow. The down arrow. And now you go to sources. This is where you go and find new sources. Now, I do have, like I said, I've got all this stuff written out. I've just got to make the changes that we talk about here. But it will take you through all this. You didn't see that. If you want to change something on computer concepts, you click on the little funnel. This is going to filter. Okay? You can say what keywords to look for, either all of these words, an exact phrase, any of these words, or none of these words. So if you don't want poo-poo or wee-wee or something like that, you put those as words that don't go in there. If you want to look for Microsoft... Okay, if you will, if you will go ahead and... Uh, okay, did you, did you get us, are you with us there? Yeah, so you're at, this, at, the, at the, the selections, the, the choices, the sources. Once you get that, you want to click on the funnel. You're going to filter that down. Okay? And you're going to put in whatever keywords that you want to put. My recommendation for sources is if you have IEEE as one of the sources that you follow, you might want to go see who they're following because that's where they're getting their good information from and follow them, put them as a source in here. Okay? Or if you've got another organization for, for IT specialists, put that in there and follow them. Now, if you want to add more, go ahead and remove that filter. If you want to find something more, what, what more specific can you get besides computer concepts? Blogging. Okay. Something like that. If, if that's what you're doing, blogging. And so when I pull these, I should be able to read this article and find something that pertains to what my topic was that I had it looking for. Is that correct? Yes. I don't see it. Good one. <laughs> well, okay, scroll back up. Go to your settings again. And go to sources. Okay, gifted education, gifted students have special needs too. See, that's, that's going to be an article, that's not... Okay, so, the, all right, so when I pull that, then that's going to pull... That article, okay. if, it's any, if it's in there again. What I like to do is stay with Twitter accounts, rather than articles, or an RSS feed where they're constantly updating something, okay?
Okay, you can do the Twitter search. Okay. Now, go ahead and hit done. Let's see what you got. You don't want to do the API. Well, okay, you can do the API. That's cool. No, that's cool. That's cool. Leave it there. It's okay. Now, when it comes out, and sometimes it's a matter of finding the right keyword. Okay? Um, let's see. Go back up. So when I did gifted education, did that, pull, that could have, if they're not linked together, pull gifted or education? Yes. When you go into the filter, look specifically for gifted and education. Um, and so if I look at an article, I just have to click, you just on, click on it yeah. and it'll fill the page. And it goes, well, it opens up a new tab, but it goes straight to that article. Okay. Okay. Now, the good thing about this, um, if you go back to the paper right here, Where, which way? right here. Here. Yeah, that's it. Now, you see where it says subscribe. If you click on the subscribe button, or if you put this out on your blog for somebody to subscribe to this, what they do, go ahead and click that, is they want your email address and then the human word, and then you will get this in your email at the prescribed time on the prescribed day. If it's every day at 8 o'clock, you'll get in your email, you'll see some of the headlines. If you want to look at it, you click on it and you go. You don't have to keep going to the website to see if there's something new up there. If you want to opt out of it, you can opt out of this. You can share it, you can favorite it, you can do anything you want. Let's go ahead and cancel that, please. If you want to go back up to the settings, and click on appearance. This is where you can do a little bit to fancy up your paper. You cannot do the banner for free, but you can do a background. So if you've got a, a brick background, a brick wall, or something like that, you just want to make it look a little bit nicer, you can do that, or you can change the color of the background to whatever you'd like. To change the color, you would just click in the little square and you would choose whatever color you want. I have a quick question. What if you want to take, when you were selecting the sources, how do you take it off? You see the garbage can? Mm, yes, on this side, but not on this side. Okay. Oh, if, it's, if it's on this side, you don't worry about it. You haven't put it in. If it's in the list here, oh, okay. you hit the garbage can, and it'll take it out. All right. Okay? okay. Thank you. Okay, now the background color, do I pick from? Yeah. Wide yeah. Pick, pick, from, pick a green. Well, y'all, South, uh, West Alabama is red, right? Find a red. Okay. Now just find the color here and click on it. Okay. And now hit escape. Escape. Yeah. To get out of the box. Okay. Now, what's going to happen here? This is what's going to light up when you roll over the text. So if you wanted to use blue or this, whatever you want to do, you click on it. Okay? Now, your fonts down here, this is the title font. So if you click on the drop down arrow, you've got a limited number of fonts that you can choose from. But you can also, if you scroll down just a little bit more, that's okay. Roll across. And click down the down arrow again and scroll down a little bit more please scroll on down no scroll over here that's okay you can pick the font and then you can pick the font size bigger or smaller you can do the same for the subtitle and for the content text okay when you get done with it you hit save Okay, now hit save. Once That's okay. Well, we'll we're going we're going to find out here pretty quick. Now scroll back up to the top, please. And update the paper. 
This is going to change it to the new settings that you have. Do you see how you could use this in your classroom? Yeah. Does anybody else see how they could use this in IT? Can you find information about viruses or, or hoaxes or, you know, just general information to help do some professional development for your teachers or your students? Now, once you've updated it, now go ahead and do yes. And once that gets done, you want to click on view paper. Let it finish up. Please. And now you want to view paper. And what this is going to do is it's going to put her red background over here. You see how big your text is now? Roll over this ResearchGov C innovation. You see how, well it didn't change. It may still be loading. Is it still loading? Uh, I think the network went away. If you pay for it, yes. If you don't, no. But you are not going to get advertisements for uh, Budweiser beer. You probably aren't going to get the... You see how... Okay, there it came back. Roll over this white one over here. You see how it changes to the color scheme that you had. And it's also got it up here. Okay. Your advertising, it's, it, to get a premium version, and if you were doing something where you had uh, somebody who wanted to sponsor it and, and sponsor your, your paper, it's $9 per month per paper. And you can put your own custom header and your own advertisements in there. So that might be something to look at if you are doing something for a school newspaper or for athletics, or for Mecca. Would, would this be an easy way, like in, in, in my case, where I'd like to monitor what my alums are doing all over the country? If, you if, think if we're either like Mississippi School for Math and Science or MSMS, if they use that in their tweet, it would show up? If, they, if they had a link, in there. They've got to have a link or a video or a picture. It's not going to be. Now, what you can do is you can, you can go in and have a blog and let them add comments to a blog and send the RSS feed and have it picked up there. Okay. Debbie, you had a question. Okay. Keep working on it. Modify. Okay, you know that's that's part of the that's part of the when you confirm it, you don't have to do that. Okay, so what do we do? With just go, just refresh twitter.com. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Let's see. I don't like Internet Explorer. Okay. And it doesn't like me. Okay. Let's go back here again. And now go back in and do twitter.com. Okay. And it's going to come up to your, to your, or it's going to come up and ask you to sign in with your account. Okay. Okay, go ahead and sign in. Can you do something with this, Calvin? Yes, sir. Quit calling me, sir. You were in my first class. <laughs> Bobby, what about it? Can you, is there something you can... Now, this works fine on a tablet. It view, views fine on a tablet. Have you been able to look at it on a tablet? Is this something you can see using? Absolutely. What do you do? Library media. <sighs> Whoa, there's lots of stuff you can put out there. And again, because it's... You can actually, you can actually embed this into your website. Okay, so... Hmm. Hang on one second. I'm going to have to go steal this from... Miss West Alabama. So we're going to go back and add more. We just go into the settings. Yes. Okay. May I borrow this one second? Yeah. And I wanted to ask you something too. All right.
tell me one more time too how you go back and edit the paper. Just I know it's easy. I just forgot what you told me to click. No soup for you. I just forgot what for the edit part. Okay, this is this is my personal website. Okay, this is a WordPress site. You can stay up here. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you how to do this. But what I've got is my social media. I've got videos. I've got Twitter feeds, and I've got my baseball paper li. And what it does is when it comes up, it's actually embedded in the web page. Okay, and I can scroll down and look at whatever I want to look at. If I've got any photos, it brings up the pictures right here. If there's any media, any YouTube or whatever, there it is right there, and I can watch it inside of my website. Okay? If I need to go full screen with it, I can do that. When I come out, I'm still in my paper. Again, I can go and look at the top stories. Anything that's SEC, Booyah. Uh, if I want to share it with somebody, I can do that by simply subscribing it or share it on Twitter. You got your Twitter account, you can send it out that way. Okay? But it's embedded within your website. And they give you the code for that. Now, your question was how to go back in and edit things, right? I just, just to edit that page, like if I wanted to pull, I forgot what I had to click to go back in and edit. Okay. We're back here. Okay. You want to click on the icon, the gear icons up at the top. Okay. And you want to go, if you want to change your appearance, you do appearance. Okay. Your sources, that's going to be. That's now. They limit you to 25 sources. But here's the thing about it. In Twitter... Okay, yeah, go ahead and cancel, please. Oh, you canceled everything. That's okay, that's okay. You didn't break it. Okay. Um, it was just that drop down. Let's see if we can go back to it again. Should already be logged in, so. So that's how quick it once you're once you're logged in. Now I can go back to my papers and computer concepts today. Okay. Okay. So you can create ten or eleven papers per email account to make the, to adjust your sources. Go back up, please, ma'am. One minute. You see where it says edit mode? Do you see that? Yeah. And then you go to the gear right beside it. Okay? Now, you're limited to 25 sources, and you may have 45 or 50 Twitters that you really want to follow. How do we do this? In Twitter, they let you create lists. So if you're doing computer or doing library services, you may want to have library media and a list of people who are just putting out content about media. You can have 15, 20, 30 people in that list, and that's one source. And then I can have a list of what authors? Authors that people are talking about. So now you could have 25 lists with 10 Twitter accounts that you're following in each one. So you could be following 250 Twitter feeds versus 25. And that's relatively simple to do in Twitter to set that up. Is that on one of your I can I can put that in. Okay. I can put that in. It's not a problem. Do we have to save this paper now? Do I mean, do we have to do something to save it, or is it now saved? If you created it, it's saved. Okay. All you have to do now is go into Paper Li, log in using your Twitter account, and it'll bring up. And the way you find it is up in the upper point. It'll say favorites. You see that up on the upper upper left hand, upper right hand side. I'm pointing with this hand. But see, if you go over here and do your favorites. You're only going to have one thing under here right now. It's motivating gifted students. Mm -hmm. But as you continue to add things, they'll drop in. Okay. And all you have to do is click on it and go in and make the change. Now, we're about to wrap up out of time here because I know y'all want to go home early. Sunshine, yeah. am I close enough? Yeah, you can go till 7. I'm good. Well, I don't think these ladies and gentlemen want to go till 7. Yeah, you can. 
uh, we, we're supposed to go to what, 515? Do we have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Also, tell us uh, the different tweets that you follow on your uh, website. The different tweets, Twitter accounts that I follow on my stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, for your newspaper. Okay. What I do, let's go to my What's New in Technology Daily. Okay. When I go and look at this, I've got, I believe it's 17 sources that are already taken up. I'm following my list, which is technology by whatever. I've got Web 2.0, Doctors 2.0, how doctors are using social media, Web 2.0 tools, Web 2.0 marketing, as far as the technology things go. I've also got uh, Web 2.0 Cafe, Enterprise Web 2.0, Web 2.0 feeds, make use of. Okay, are those okay. in that list over there that we can find? Or are these it, depend, it depends on what you're looking for. Okay. When, you put, when you put the keywords up here that you're looking for, okay. that's where these, these sources come up. Okay? Also, if you're in Twitter, and I'm looking for technology. Okay, now, let's say, I'll tell you what. What's your name, sir? Antonio. Antonio. Did I talk to you last week? You and Jackson? Okay. Okay, you're familiar. I still work at the RCU. Shh. Okay, give me a Twitter account that you might follow for technology. For technology? Um, probably Dale, because we're trying to go. Okay, there's Dell Education. So what I would do is I would go to their, their Twitter account and I would see that they're following 8,000 people. They're pretty much a leader in the market, so I want to find out who they're following. So I would go here and click on following, and now I would start looking down here. And let's see. Hawaii Department of Education. I might want to know what they're doing out there. So what I do is I simply go over here and click follow. That's how you find people to follow and start looking at who's got good information. If they don't have anything good, boom, they're out of there. Um, current issues in education. I might want to put that one and follow that one. But that's how you find the people that you want to put in your paper. Okay? It's a good question. Thank you. Questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, you could. If you if you're not if you're not logged in to your paper li account, but you're looking at it, you can actually go in, clip that from the front page. You don't want to get something from an article later on but from that front page. Now, I've never been able to show you any pictures. Um, let's see, let's go to the baseball one, let's go back to, let's see, maybe yesterday, and see there's some videos, there's no pictures, let's go back to the day before, I was trying to show you what the, what the pictures would look like. The third. Well, there's no pictures there either. That's just no good. But you can sit there and, and find information like that and generate things that you can give to your students. You can put it in Blackboard. I know one person here that uses Blackboard. How many people use Blackboard? 
you can generate this paper and embed it in your Blackboard class. So your daily announcements could be, go to the latest newspaper and check it out. It's a great way for students to generate newsletters for an assignment. If you're teaching them about computer technology and so forth, about library science, what you can do is get them to generate their own paper and then share it with others. Maybe some others can collaborate with them. Okay? Questions? Debbie, did you get your did you get it going? Now you've advanced what? You've gotten to Selly. Okay. Well, look, hey, I'm not going anywhere. I will be glad to sit here and answer questions and help anybody with anything. Keith, are you good with this? Have you got something set up? Have you got a paper set up? What's your paper? Well, I, I tell you what, hang on, hang on. Here's how you can find somebody. If you want to find somebody at Paper LI. You go to the website, you do newsstand, and we're going to do find a person. Keith, spell your name for me. D D A R. D E A R. D E A R. Dear, honey, sweetie. Okay. Users. Now, as you can see, Keith does not have a an icon in Twitter yet. But we know he's not an egghead. Now we go over here and we look at his paper, and you've got technology today. Let's see what Keith has, has chosen for this. Okay. He's got something shared by Computer Arts. 45 free Photoshop actions. These are not the same things that Linda. Linda or Lisa? Lisa. I knew it was. I was testing you, Rick. I was testing you. Okay. You can vote for this man because he knows your name. But as you can see, there's 10 free grunge fonts. Win tickets awards here. Uh, color to the spring ad campaign. These are all things that you can create and customize for your students or what you're trying to get across to them. And this slide is in Switzerland, I said. Yeah. Or Yavo, one of the two. Yes, sir. And if I like that slide, I can subscribe to it. Yes. You can, yeah, you, you don't have to get the subscription. The only, the only reason I like subscription is sometimes when you're getting it started, you may not have the right keywords, or they may have it set to come out once a week. And if it comes out on Friday and you come look at it Tuesday, you're just going there for no reason. Whereas if it comes in your email, now you know that something's there. You'll see the headline area right here. I don't want to do this right now. And you go on. But you're, you're correct. All you've got to do is simply bookmark it. And if it comes in the email, is it going to show the content or just the The content. A little bit of the content on the front page. Yeah. You see a lot of times. Yeah. Just one screen of it. Now, what you can also do. Okay, so if I subscribe and I don't go check it, it's just, just making a new paper every day, but I'm not seeing it. Correct. Once you, once you do this, you can walk away, and it's going to go until that site shuts down. Every day going out and finding these people that you put in there to follow their feeds and look for certain words, it's going to go do that whether you get up or not. Okay? I'll be six feet under somewhere, and unless I remember to get rid of these things, and if they're still in business, I'm going to keep pumping out newspapers from the other side. My friends go say, hey, that's a neat trick. So how do I put that newspaper on my tweet? Okay, how do you put this out on your tweet? What you can do, make sure I'm signed in here.
in the settings area where is it um, promotion and emails right here send a promotional tweet automatically every time it comes out I told you you don't have to do anything you set it up it rocks on its own if you don't want it to go out you simply take that off when I go back and look at where is it yeah do I hang on one second hang on one second let's see if I can see if I can find my tweets over here Well, I know I tweeted something out here. No, no. That just gives you a little bit more capability. Let me see if I can. Okay. You see right here, 22 hours ago, what's new in technology daily is out. That automatically went out on my tweets. So it's gone. When a new paper is generated, it's automatically going to tweet this out. You remember, do you remember where it asked you to log in with your Twitter account? That's why. It's going to tweet for you that your new paper is out. Okay? Right here. The new Technology Daily is out at Paper LI, and there's the link. And the top stories are by whoever. As soon as that paper is generated, Right here where it says send a promotional tweet automatically for each new edition. If you've got that link that clicked right there, as soon as your new paper goes out, your Twitter account is going to send this out right here. As you can see, what's new in technology went out. Here's um, what's new in technology just went out two days ago so it's going to go out every time that new paper is generated it's going to automatically tweet that for you unless you turn it off now if you're the only person that somebody's following and you're not tweeting anything except this your timeline is going to be the new this is out the new this is out the new it's going to go people get tired of it but if you've got other tweets going along with it it's going to pick that up and you'll be able to say okay here, here's this one okay does that make sense? So anybody that's following me will get that. that if saying? anybody that's following you on Twitter we'll get will get that message when it goes out. Okay? Questions? Comments? Is everybody ready to go home? <laughs> or at least ready to go grab dinner? Yeah, I kind of figured that. I'm a big guy. I don't miss too many dinners, as y'all can tell. Okay, well, if you have any questions, you can go to my blog site. Which is right here. And I believe on the home page, it's got my contact. You can follow me. Craig Jackson. That's probably going to be one I'm doing more information on. I'm trying to get that RCU BB Tech Twitter account down to just Blackboard Tech updates. I want people to sign up for that so that if, if the system's down, they can get it on Twitter. I've also got a Selly account for that. So when Blackboard goes down, the first thing I do is send something out via Twitter but that's tied to my Selly account, so when I send one, I send both. And that's always good, because if you're not paying attention to yourself, to your, to your Twitter account, you're probably paying attention to your cell phone. My phone number is 662-205-6323. Victoria, is that right? <laughs> I had to press my speed dial. 205 
Okay, the source for the handouts, you're going to go to the, the blog, you're going to go to my presentations in 2013 Mecca, Craig's Tech Blog, all one word, Craig's Tech Blog, dot wordpress.com.